From the day I started working as a data analyst trainee, it took me just over four years to start working as a freelancer for big clients, earning six figures per year and giving me the freedom to travel the world. And since I got a lot of questions about how to start freelancing as a beginner, Today, I'm sharing with you how you can become a freelancer yourself, especially if you're into data, programming, or any IT related field actually. By the end of this video, you'll know how much experience you actually need to start as a freelancer. I'll explain how to actually land that first freelance job or project. And I'll share some technical stuff like how much to charge for your first freelance job. And on top of that, throughout this video, I'll share the three biggest mistakes every starting freelancer makes. So stay tuned for those. The first thing you need to do as a freelancer is obviously get experience. Because who's gonna hire you if you have nothing to show for? But how do you get experience if no one is gonna hire you? The classic catch-22 situation. But there's actually two ways to solve this challenge a lot of people face. And the first one, which is the long one, which I also took, is to first get a regular job as a regular employee. I mean, it's already challenging enough to get that first job as a fresh graduate but it's way harder to start as a freelancer right away. Why? Well, because when you get hired for your first job, it's not because you're so experienced, because you're not, you don't have any experience. And trust me, studying, reading books and taking online courses is nothing like actually working with people in complex and dynamic environments. Theory is nothing like reality. So then why would companies hire someone with no experience at all? It. Well, because they see the potential in you to become really good at your job. They invest in you by hiring you and accepting that you won't be adding value to the company straight away. But as you grow and learn on the job, you will be adding value to the company. And on the other hand, the reason companies hire freelancers is precisely because they are already skilled and experienced, expecting them to add value immediately. So there is no way you will get hired as a freelancer without any experience. That's the whole point of freelancing. So the first way we start freelancing is get a normal job, get experience, start freelancing. Now the other way, which is much faster, is to skip the whole working as a regular employee and go straight into freelancing. But didn't you just explain that you first need experience as a freelancer? Yes. But here's the thing, up until now, I was talking about freelancing in your own country, local freelancing market, if you will. But since the rise of the internet and since remote work has become so normal in our world, there's a completely different freelancing market. I wanted to say financial market. I'm talking about the online freelance market. Platforms like Upwork, Freelancer.com, and Fiverr.com connect companies and projects with freelancers from all over the world. You just need to create an account and offer your services. That's it. Now, as I said, I personally don't have any experience with offering my skills through Fiverr.com or Upwork, but I do have experience with hiring data scientists through these platforms when I needed some help with building a machine learning model. And to be honest, the experience was great. So I know for a fact that it works. However, there are pros and cons to starting your freelancing career this way compared to a normal job first. Let's start with the pros. You can start freelancing right away. No degree, certificates or diplomas required. You just need to do your job well, get positive reviews and people will soon start reaching out to you for help. And of course there's a the fact that you can do your work from any place in the world. However, this also brings me to the cons of freelancing through these platforms. Because you're competing against freelancers from all over the world. Meaning you're also competing with freelancers that might live in a country with a very low standard of living, meaning they are willing to offer their services for a very low price, which you have to compete against. So the market is much more competitive through these platforms. And that brings me to another disadvantage of freelancing through these platforms. It can be tough to stand out when there's so many professionals on there. Why would someone hire you if you have zero reviews? This is a one, this is a zero. When you have zero reviews when starting out on these platforms. Well, again, there's two ways to tackle this problem when you're starting out. First one being, be competitive in your pricing. Offer your services for a very cheap price at the beginning. So you do the work not necessarily for the money, but for the work experience and for the reviews. Eventually, the more reviews you have, the more money you can ask. And if you don't want to work for free, the other thing you can do to stand out is be very specific in your services. Niche down your offering. I mean, there's already hundreds of data analysts on the platform. Look at this. I will be your personal data analyst and visualization expert. The next one. I will be your data analyst and visualization expert. The next one. I will be your data analyst and visualization expert. But if you're very specific in your services, you could stand out that way. For example, I'm a data analyst building dashboards for advanced YouTube analytics for content creators. That's someone who I would definitely consider hiring myself. Stand out by being specific. And eventually, the more experience, testimonials and reviews you gather, the higher the chances are of getting hired by a traditional company 
in your local freelance market. This brings me to mistake number one, waiting too long to start freelancing. And I made this mistake myself as well. Once I started my career as a data analyst, I was knew I wanted to eventually become a freelancer. But I always had this idea that I need at least 10 years of experience. When I'm really skilled, only then will I be able to make the step to freelancing. But the opposite could not be more true. You see, you do need some experience, but as soon as you're good enough to start adding value to a company, you can start freelancing. And depending on where you work, in what industry and how fast you grow your skills, this can be done as fast as just a couple of months. You have to realize that people don't hire you because you're the senior freelancer with 25 years of experience and 43 diplomas and degrees and whatever. No. Companies hire you because they have a problem that they cannot solve themselves. If you can solve the problem, they're gonna hire you. That's it. It's that simple. Just start. Don't wait until you have enough experience, until you feel ready, because that feeling will never come. I guarantee, and a lot of freelancers told me this before I started freelancing myself, that once you do start freelancing, the only thing you will say to yourself is, why didn't I start freelancing sooner? And it was true. And if you're currently freelancing or if you're watching this video and eventually start freelancing, please let me know in the comments if I was right. But okay, so now we've talked about how to gather enough experience to start as a freelancer. But how do we actually make that step towards freelancing? How do we land that first job? There's multiple ways. And the first one being your contacts, your warm contacts. Tell everyone you know that you want to start freelancing. And I'm not just talking about your friends and family, but also your ex-employers, ex-colleagues, and people you've worked on on Fiverr.com or Upwork or whatever. Tell everyone you know. You will be amazed at how valuable your network can be when it comes to finding your first project. And best of all, because it's through your warm network, through people you know, the chances of getting hired are way higher because people can vouch for you. I got my very first freelance project through an ex-colleague of mine. He knew that eventually I wanted to start freelancing. So when he needed help with a small data project, he reached out to me. And if your warm contacts don't lead you to landing your first freelance job, then you should try your cold contacts. And with this, I mainly mean leverage the power of LinkedIn. This is the place where you get to showcase your experience, your work and your testimonials to the world. This is your business card, resume and networking platform in one. I've created a video before explaining exactly how you should set up your LinkedIn profile in order for recruiters to start approaching you with job offerings instead of you having to look for them yourself. And of course, nowadays, LinkedIn is also a job platform where you can look for pro pro projects and clients yourself. But this brings me to mistake number two, applying directly at companies. And I know this might sound strange, but hear me out. Although a lot of companies have their own recruitment department, the majority of companies hire a third party to do the recruitment for them. And these so-called recruitment agencies are basically the middleman between a company looking for you. They match you up, especially when it comes to freelancing. So rather than only applying at companies, my advice would be to also reach out to these recruitment agencies to get your profile in their system. You usually have a quick call with them and send them your resume and they start looking for jobs for you. Yes, they do take a cut in your hourly rate, but it's usually not that much. Plus it's worth it if you if it could Plus it's worth it if they can land a job for you. Okay, so now once you've leveraged your contacts, you've landed the first job, before you actually can start working as a freelancer, there's a couple of things you need to take care of. First of all, how much are you going to charge per hour? Well, it can be quite confusing if you're just starting out. How much should you ask? But luckily, there's a couple of websites that can be a good starting point to determine how much to charge per hour. Note that these are averages, so it really depends on the country you're living in. And if doing a bit of research on Google doesn't help you out, you can always try and reach out to a freelancer on LinkedIn who's doing exactly the same thing you are going to do, ideally in the same country, and just send them a message explaining your situation. Hi man, sorry for the random message, but I'm looking to get into freelancing myself, but I'm not sure how much to ask as a beginner. I saw you're already an IT freelancer and was wondering if you have any advice on how much to ask. Thanks, Stefan. That's it. You'll be surprised at how easy it is to get a response from someone on LinkedIn. And the next two small things you need to take care of is registering yourself at the Chamber of Commerce and getting a business insurance. Where I'm from, Holland, I need to register myself as a business once I start earning an income as a freelancer. I need to start doing my own bookkeeping and my tax returns. So make sure to check how that works in the country you live in. And I also had to get a business insurance in case something happens while working. As a freelancer, you have the full responsibility over your income, your time, taxes, insurance, liabilities, and learning. Which brings me to mistake number three. Stop learning and growing your skills. 
It's really simple. As a regular employee, the company you work for usually invests in you by letting you take courses, attend workshops or get certifications. They have an incentive to invest in you because you will become a better employee working for the company. But as a freelancer, you have none of that. You're solely responsible for your own career and thus your skills and knowledge. A lot of freelancers quit evolving and growing the skills as soon as they land a job. But the fact is that the IT landscape is changing only faster and faster. Meaning by the time you finish your project, your skills may already be outdated. Meaning you have to start from scratch again. So make sure to keep learning, updating your skills, taking courses, getting certified. And I'll be completely honest, it can be challenging to land that first freelance job. It took me more than half a year to actually land my first job. And I can remember the countless applications I've sent, the multiple interviews I've been to and getting rejected by every one of them. But eventually I got hired and so many opportunities came my way ever since. And that's the thing with freelancing. Getting the first job may be really challenging, but once you land that first job, it will open the door to a world of opportunities. It led to me being able to save enough money to quit my job, travel the world, and focus on creating a creative business. Something completely different. Best decision ever. See you in the next video.